All right, guys, so during this lecture, we're going to be talking about uh, reserved and special IP address ranges. We'll also be talking about class full and class less IP addressing. And then we'll be talking about who assigns these addresses to keep things from crossing over and overlapping. So let's start out with some special IP addresses. Some special IP address ranges you need to know. Okay, the first uh, one we're going to talk about is private IP address ranges. Now, what private ranges are is they are uh, addresses that cannot be routed on the internet. They are for private networks only. Now, uh, this, this means that uh, you cannot use it over the internet. It will never be routed out of an internal network. So that being said, in order to use them on an internal network, you normally have to have network address translation, NAT, which we'll be getting into a little bit later. Uh, for now, just know that they're unroutable, and it's very important to know them. They will ask you about these on your CSENT exam. Okay, so the first range we're going to learn is uh, the 10.0.0.0 all the way to 10.255.255. Dot 255 range. This is your first private IP range. Out of there are three private IP ranges. The second private IP range we're going to learn is 172.16.0.0 uh, all the way to 172.3 Okay, so that's your second set of private IP address ranges. The third set of private IP address ranges you're going to have is 192.168.0.0 all the way to 192.168.255.255. Okay, so these are your private IP addresses. They are the ones that are not routable. You won't be able to use them uh, across the internet. You'll need to use them behind network address translation. This, of course, is so that private networks will never have an issue with uh, not having enough IP addresses on the network. Okay, the next, uh, the next uh, reserved set of IP addresses we're going to learn is your local, uh, local host set or your loopback. Okay, the loopback range is reserved to 127.0.0.0 all the way up to 127.255.255.255. Now, what this range does is if you uh, ping or you communicate with this range whatsoever, it will be communicating with the computer that the packet originated from. It talks to itself. It loops back. That's why we call it the loopback. All right, the next one we're going to learn is we are going to learn about link local addresses. Link local addresses are IPv4 addresses that are reserved for a local um, connection, cannot be routed on the internet, uh, and every host can assign its own address just in case DHCP isn't working. This is done through a process called a PIPA. Now, a PIPA is an important acronym to associate with this link local range. So if you're going to remember this range by anything, remember it by a PIPA and remember that it is for hosts that were not able to get an address via DHCP. So this address range is going, uh, it's going to be 169.254.0.0 all the way up to 169.254.255.255. Uh, 254.255.255. All right. So the next set of reserved addresses we need to know, of course, are your test net addresses. Now, test net addresses are addresses that are actually assignable, but they are reserved for testing networks. They are um, basically an experimentation range used for classroom environments and such. 
So the test net range is 192.0.2.0 all the way up to 192.0.2.255. So, again, this is for labs or for classroom environments where uh, you don't have to worry about conflicting addresses as, again, this is going to be not routable, but they are assignable, unlike our next uh, reserved block of addresses. Our next reserved block of addresses are what we call experimental addresses. Or class E. Okay. These addresses are uh, reserved for experimentation use only and most network interface cards without being able to uh, manually change it uh, in, inside of the operating system uh, are not assignable. However, in theory, these addresses could be converted to usable addresses if needed. So, uh, these, this address range runs from 240.0.0.0 .0 .0 .0 all the way up to 255.255.255.254. Remember, 255.255.255.255 is for a link local broadcast. So, we're actually going to put that one in there. Your link local broadcast address is what your next reserved address. And that is going to be 255.255.255.255. All right, we only have one more set of reserved addresses. Now this set of reserved addresses is what we call the class D address, or the multicast address range. So class D, or multicast, takes place uh, from your 224.0.0.0 all the way up to 239 dot two five five dot two five five dot two five five and remember the first range in there the two uh, the two two four dot zero dot zero dot one uh, zero up to two two four dot zero dot zero dot two two five uh, two five five is your link local and everything else is global we're not going to write that down again however just remember that so these are your special IP address ranges they are reserved and for a special use and can only be used for this specific purpose when designing a network. Now, uh, one other thing I'd like to mention about Class E is if you'd like to know more about Class E, what it is and uh, how it's meant to be used, you can review um, RFC, Request for Comment, 3330. So again, if you guys would like to uh, know more about experimental Class E addresses, you can review that RFC. Now, uh, next we're going to uh, be getting into class full IP addressing. Now, I'm going to give a disclaimer for class full. Class full is still useful to understand for some of your basic certifications and even for some basic design purposes. However, remember that class full addressing is now legacy and outdated. It is not used as a standard anymore. Uh, we'll talk about uh, classless interdomain routing, which is the um, new replacement for class full addressing. Uh, we'll, we'll get to that next, but uh, we'll hit class full first. All right, so class full addressing, again, is going to be breaking down all IP addresses by uh, range and subnet mask into three chunks, or five chunks, rather. Your first chunk is class A. All right. Class A will always use a slash 24 IP address. Always. Uh, not a slash 24, sorry, that's, that's my fault. A class A address will always use a slash 8 address. So, remember, class A is a slash 8, and it will take place between 0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 all the way up to, um, I think, I think it goes all the way up to uh, 126. So 126.255.255.255. Now remember, your uh, loopback address is the 127 range, so it can't be overlapped. The next class is class B. 
Class B, by default, will always use a slash 16 uh, subnet mask. And it starts at 128.0.0.0. And it goes all the way up to 191. Uh, dot, yeah, goes all the way up to 191.255.255.255. So that's your class B IP address range. Now, last but uh, not least that is going to be new is you've got class C. And this is going to always use a slash 8 subnet mask. And this is going to run from 192.0.0.0 all the way up to uh, 223 .255 All right, and then of course we've already in your uh, in your special IP addresses we've already defined class D and class E IP address ranges. All right. So this is class full IP addressing. Again, remember that uh, this is outdated and not used anymore. It is legacy. OK. So up next, we have the new standard, which is uh, classless enter domain routing, for short, CIDR. This is where we get CIDR notation, or slash notation, is from this uh, protocol. This protocol uh, is classless and can allocate any uh, subnet to any specific address range based on your need for hosts and for subnets. So you could have a 192.168.0.0.0. One dot uh, zero network with a slash twenty three range if you needed it. That is CIDR notation. Now it is the new standard. We'll get uh, into subnet masks in our next section that'll kind of help you guys understand a little bit more about how CIDR works and how subnet masking works to create a bigger environment or separate environments. All right, so uh, one last thing we need to know is at, uh, IP addresses. We know IP addresses are a limited resource. So from the beginning, uh, IP addresses have had, to been, ha have had to have a top level assignment. At first, it was all managed by one group called IANA. I-A-N-A. -A. They're responsible for assigning all IP addresses. That includes IPv4 and IPv6. Now, at first, they did it by themselves. Now they do it through delegation out to multiple smaller companies. If you guys would like more information on that, you'll have to hop on Google. But remember that the big one here that still to a degree manages IP address um, assignment is IANA, I-A-N-A. -A. All right, uh, thanks for watching this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Next time, we will be talking about IPv6 addressing and uh, some of the things you can do with it. It will be a little bit longer than this lecture because it has a lot to encompass, but it should be good and give a new, new perspective. I hope to see you guys next time.